Hi, everybody. So, uh, oopsie. That was very quick. Hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining. Hi, Susan, Jackie, Trisha, Tish, Catherine, and I'm sure I've missed some names as well. So, hi, everybody. Welcome to Amsterdam. Uh, that's enough for me. And there we get the beautiful Singel Canal. So, are we on time yet? I started a little bit early because of the delay. Uh, people are looking at me strangely. Oh, well, that happens a lot. That happens even without the camera. So, welcome, welcome. Hello, Joy. So, today... Oh, you know, I'm, I always swear I will never complain about the heat in Amsterdam because I love the heat but my goodness it's been hot the last few days <laughs> like 36 degrees centigrade and not a breath of wind at night so I've had two terrible nights sleep you know because we don't have aircon and oh my fan I don't even know where it is so yeah but I'm really enjoying the slightly less hello Lynn uh, <sighs> less hot weather now today's walk is along the single canal that over there is central station and the single canal we'll talk about that in a bit well i'll talk about it now really so single means belt or girdle and that was actually spelled with a c years ago and the canal was dug in 1425 it was a moat and it had an old city wall along it and um, that was on the eastern side. So the houses and businesses then, so these ones we're looking at here, would have actually, let me just cross the road, been looking at a wall. Okay. And then when the wall came down, they were looking over open water. So let me try my new trick. I'm going to share you a little video to show you here. Check it out. Um, Here's a lovely old map of the city and I'm kind of zooming in here onto where we're standing and you can see down in the bottom of the screen just going out of focus there's a tower over there and there's the sluice or the locks and that's actually where I am right now so let's get off that off stream scream stream scream well I can't even speak so anyway that is where we are and the wall started coming down in uh, 1601. And I've got a lovely old photo for you. I just want to try and line it up correctly. So, looking over here towards Central Station, there's this clump of buildings. Yeah. And there used to be a tower. Here it is. Let's make that big. So this is actually from to my left, looking down the single canal. And there you can see the tower over there. And um, uh, it was originally called the Holy Cross Tower. And it was on the city wall. However, in 1578, when we had the alteration here and Amsterdam became High Audrey, uh, when Amsterdam became Protestant, they changed the names of things like the tower in this case to the herring packers tower <laughs> and uh, they changed the names of the churches as well up until then uh, there'd been saint nicholas church and saint catherine's church and what they did is they changed those names uh, to the old church and the new church respectively because you know as protestants aren't so crazy about saints anyway over here on the right hand side down here and this was the western side of the canal uh, these plots were snapped up by merchants who uh, wanted to to build nice houses and the idea was for this canal here the single canal to be grand you know grand like the coming canal belt so it was actually renamed the Koningskracht and um, hello Hilary welcome welcome and then the Koningskracht means the King's Canal, but the name just never stuck. There's only one remnant of that that I'm aware of. Way down there is the Konings Plain, the, 
the King's Play. Now look at us in this busy little corner here, trying to decide whether to take. Yeah. <laughs> you want to say hello? Um. <laughs> Red light district. <laughs> okay. Get there now. Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> okay. Now the lock here. Um, and I've got a nice, another old nice photo here. Hello, it's Sachi, I'm here. Great, oh, look how busy it is on the water. It's actually forecast to maybe shower. But anyway, check out this photo. So taken from more or less this position. And here we go. Oh, how lovely is that? Oh, I'm just loving these old photos and I'm loving to be able to share them with you like this. So yeah, there's an old photo of where we are now. Ta-da! I'm gonna do this once more time just for the sheer joy of it. <laughs> and back we come. Oh no, back we come, there we go. Yeah, such a traffic jam with these boats. Anyway, look, so this lock here was completed in 1602. And it was very, very important uh, uh, because so much traffic came through that. Lots and lots of markets uh, sprang up here. The straw market, which is just down there where we've been on an earlier tour, a biscuit market, an apple market, a shrimp market. And there were barges and there were ferries. And, um, you know, actually kind of like this, I guess. Although these are uh, tourist boats. I love these boats, by the way. They're my favorite tourist boats. They've got a real kind of Art Deco look to them and huge windows, which are just brilliant. And bearing in mind, there were all these barges coming through here to the Brewer's Canal, just behind me where we were last week. And they would have to bring water, uh, water for the, uh, the breweries to, to make their beer. So, I mean, it was chaotic. So it wasn't quite the genteel sort of, um, how you say, residential part that people wanted. And here, uh, does anyone direct the traffic at the lock or is it just every boat for itself? Oh, it's kind of every boat for itself, but the commercial boats take um, priority over pleasure boats and size matters with boats. The bigger boat has priority over the smaller boat. Check this out. This is talking about the historic um, key wall here. The, because there was a city wall from 1482 and um, da, 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 it was uh, renewed in 1560 and then it started to come down in 1602 and basically they used bits of it. And there's not much left because it was always used um, for other buildings, but look, there's a little bit, a little bit of the old city wall left just on the single how cool is that um yeah that young chap said go to the red light district <laughs> well he would wouldn't he there is actually a red light district just down there we're going to walk past it in a moment i'm just going to be pointing my camera away from it obviously okay let's go for a little wander so i do love this canal and um, there's all sorts of awesome details and houses even things i'm noticing for the <gasps> Oh, I didn't see that earlier. So here is, this is Het Klaverblad, which means the clover leaf, and it was the name of a brewery that was here. But I've just seen, now that the light's drawing in a little bit, there's actually a clover leaf here, um, in that uh, round section above the door. That's pretty lovely, actually. I said last week there are about five uh, breweries all around here, which is why this was called the Brewers. Uh, the one over there is called the Brewer's Canal. Well, that's one of them. Skidokes, skidokes. Very elegant houses. I so wanted to show you the top of this, but I can't get to it. Up there, there's a lovely detail of um, two, a ship with two masts. I can tell what I'm going to have to do is to go in the winter time uh, with my proper camera and zoom lens when there's no foliage getting in the way and take lots of photographs of these things and then um, have that sort of in stock <laughs> for the future. Right. Um, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Oh, is it here ready, ready? Is it here? No, it's not ready. No, it's not the cat boat yet, but I do want to show you something silly. 
There's too many people, too many people say that this is the smallest house in Amsterdam. Uh, this one here. Okay. There. Now, I know it looks small. It's number seven single. Um, but it just depends how you, how you define house. Uh, because it's just a little entrance and um, this is what it looks like uh, on the street behind. There you go. So, oh gosh, okay, hang on. So that's it, three windows wide. So it's a perfectly normal house. It just happens to have a rather small door on the canal side. So, but anyway, for, for decades and decades and decades and all the canal boats go by and this is the smallest house in Amsterdam. Now you know. Okay, so what have we coming up here? Gosh, these houses are so kind of understated, but grand. You know what's really lovely about them are the gables. Check them out. Um, I'm loving the fact that I can zoom so easily. Look at the detail on here. Isn't that great? And this one here is flat cornice gable. Marvellous stuff. Hey, and while I've got a lot of you on here, tomorrow morning I spontaneously decided I'm going to do a Good Morning Amsterdam bike ride because there is zero wind forecast for tomorrow morning. So that'll be at 8 a.m. my time. And of course it'll be on, on YouTube afterwards. So I also wanted to show you the top of this gable, but I just can't get to it. It's impossible. Um, but uh, we can see what's further down over here. They actually have mercury at the top, but let's zoom in above the door. Look how beautifully restored this is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, is this number 36? Yes, it is. Number 36 single. So there's mercury on the gable. Mercury, the Roman god of uh, uh, trade and commerce and various other things. And then down here at this level, um, there's a, a three-masted ship above the door. And the house is called Zeevrucht. Now Zeevrucht means sea fruit, the fruits of the sea. And um, it was owned by a ship owner and ship charterer. And uh, the, 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 the bike ride tomorrow, it'll probably be about an hour, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. It just depends how pretty it is tomorrow. If it's really pretty, I'm going to, yeah, I think to at least an hour. Who knows? Maybe more. And uh, we'll just see. Okay, so, okay, let me just zoom you back in, get control of the camera. Here is the Puzen boat. So here's the cat boat. Uh, which is so famous now. <laughs> and um, let me play you a video of me and Lee, well, of Lee on the cat boat. It's only half a minute long while I talk about it. So, in 1966, a cat lady here took in a stray cat or two. And then people started bringing her strays and um, she ran out of space. So she bought the boat outside her house for her cat. So that was in uh, 1968. And then in 1971, a second boat followed. And there have been various renovations of boats ever since. And um, now a new boat is actually being built and it's being funded by donations. Many made by you lovely people watching. And uh, Lee and I did a fundraiser for this not so long ago, and that's what a little clip of the video you're watching over there. So they take in like 200 to 250 cats a year, and they neuter and chip and rehome them if possible. If it's not possible to rehome them, they actually care for them for life, which is very lovely. 
It's run by a wonderful woman, Judith, and you can find the video of Lee and my fundraiser for them in my, under my live section. Just scroll down and then there are links in the description to make a donation to the cat boat if you should wish. Okay, the Round Lutheran Church. Well named, I guess. Built in 1671 and uh, burned down in 1826 when it was rebuilt. <laughs> okay, and um, a little bit fancier. Uh, when they rebuilt it the second time, uh, they put a cupola on top. Et voila. As you do. And uh, <laughs> it actually burned down in 1993. Again, the dome burned. What I find quite amazing is that I lived here then and I was completely unaware of it. It was all I was really aware of was partying in those days. <laughs> oh yeah, with the cats and the cat boats, Katsumi is lovely. The blind one is so lovely. Um, I was actually going to pop in and say hi today when I was scouting this route, but then she was too busy. She had a boat full of people, so, so I chose not to. This has been, it stopped being a church, by the way, in 1935, but it's still owned by the Lutheran Church. And um, <coughs> uh, they've been letting it out as a conference center since 1975 to the hotel just across the road from it. And um, it's, uh, you can actually access it through a tunnel from the hotel, oddly enough. But that hotel is uh, closed for like serious renovations at the moment. Looks like it's going to take years. Hey, so I saw some funny things on the way here, some nice little details, because that's what this is all about. Check out the nice uh, kind of metalwork up here. And then this is a f wonderful detail from years gone by. It gives you an idea that this was actually a working area. So paper, different types of paper bought in, old paper bought in uh, for the highest price. <laughs> so this is where you could bring your old paper and sell it to them. Amazing, yeah? And here, Gorgeous architecture here, a nice example of Amsterdam school architecture, which means basically 1930s. It's a kind of Amsterdam version of deco um, with other influences. Love the front door here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're always quite nice and large as well, the rooms inside these uh, Amsterdam school places. Very much early recycling, yeah. So, where are we up to? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh yeah, across the way here was yet another brewery. <laughs> and uh, it was sold off a long time ago. And uh, this is unusual though, because look at this house here. This is actually the exact footprint of the old brewery here. And look how it's facing the canal and you can see the side of the roof. That's very unusual. And that used to be facing the city wall, you see, and they just used exactly the same footprint and layout. Um, oh, look at this grand old place. Imagine. Ah, oh, having so much space must be such a luxury. Beautiful, it's so elegant, and you know there's a lovely roof terrace up there, because I can see the plants just peeking over uh, the parapet wall. Oh, my goodness. I remember, let me see if I can get this right. There was a quote by Nancy Mitford saying, the first time you marry, do it for love. It won't last, but enjoy it. The second time you marry, marry for money, but make sure it's big money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> of course, she was doing everything with tongue in cheek, tongue firmly in cheek. But to have a house like that, you'd have to be pretty big money. I like these doors here as well, with these little ionic 
capitals on top of the pilasters. And the way what Campen did, von Campen, oh, Tish, I am such a fan of Nancy Midford. I've read everything of hers a number of times. Uh, Campen uh, copied a Venetian architect who started like pointing these volutes outwards on the pilasters. So you see this here and on the, on the palace and down square. And uh, a very elegant little touch. Okay, let me just move this away so I'm not pointing it at that guy who's enjoying his, uh, his terrace. So, oh no, it's on one of the houses I want to talk about. Hi. Um, I just want to talk about these houses, but I'm going to point the camera, but I promise I won't have you in shot. Is that okay? Because I'm pointing it really up here. Thank you. Okay, so um, these were built in six, let me just get the camera sorted out. Okay, these were built in 1638. So really, really early on. And uh, they were built as a pair and they were built the same. And then years, a couple of centuries later, I've got it written down here somewhere, where is it? Let me just try and find it. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. A couple of centuries later. Oh yes, in 1895. Um, the one on the right here was rebuilt. So what happened, I'm just getting my glasses back so I can see if there's anything in the chat. Um, it's quite interesting to see all the different styles because this section here is the original um, Dutch Renaissance from 16, whatever it is, 68, 38, I forget now. Uh, what they did is they uh, raised it probably and then underneath you get this real sort of Dutch classicism look which is very very much simpler than the Dutch Renaissance. And let me just zoom us up here. And then this one here was completely rebuilt and this is near Renaissance. So it's very cool to be able to see uh, the original Dutch Renaissance here and then Dutch neo-Renaissance over here, uh, which is showier and it moves quite quickly that period into eclectic architecture. But there you go. I thought that was a nice little touch to see those two things together. There we go, right. <coughs> Excuse me. And what am I looking for now? Number 76. Oh my goodness. I just have to show you this car. Oh my God, will you look at this car? This is a very, very bad place to park. Okay. The, the paint is going to be ruined. Okay. Uh, okay, and over here. We have a gable stone, of course. So, as you can see, it's two ho oh gosh, I'm going to run over. Two horses and uh, a post wagon, and it says "De Haagse Postwagen," and what that is a reference to is the postal carriage that would take a uh, post to the Hague and back. That was uh, when was that? <laughs> Um, in 1660, yeah, and uh, is when it started. And it actually took less than six hours. It took about five and a half hours hey, <laughs> to get uh, from The Hague to Amsterdam. This one here was built as a school. Kind of, you know, uh, the kind of schooly architecture. So it's got that kind of slightly like an institution look to it. Beautifully located school. Okay. No, am I missing any lovely views anywhere that I need to show you? I don't think so. Just pan around quick. And uh, there are lots of nice little side alleyways. I haven't thought of doing all these side alleyways, maybe one day. Um, but there are all these types of places in Amsterdam as well. Nicely cut off to, you know, discourage traffic and loads and loads of plants outside. And, uh, 
So, um, oops. Now you will have seen this bridge often. It's called the, uh, I'll show you the name of it because it's so hard to say. It's called the Korschenbrug. And the Korschenbrug is just named after a local guy called Korschen. <laughs> okay, what a name. Uh, but what it's mainly known for now is the lovely garden that they have on it. And they, uh, they change this garden with the seasons. And I'm sure many of you have seen it over the seasons. And now it's pumpkin time coming up. And uh, they always go large <laughs> with their pumpkins. Check it out. Oh, they're all lovely views, yeah they are, Nancy. Wow, it's looking very pumpkin-y. So, you know what I'm looking for, don't you? I'm looking for a place. Have I got my slicey? I thought I brought it. Oh darn. Oh, I thought I brought a slicey to plant, but it's obviously not here. Oh well. Exactly. I actually chose one to bring, but I must have left it on my desk. Yeah, made beautiful. Not so big, but um, nice. Lots of different types. I managed to kill my hanging baskets this week. I mean, I know you meant to water them all the time. It just kind of slipped my mind because I've been unbelievably busy. Um, so yeah, my hanging baskets have gone brown. Oh my god, toilet. Well, that is funny. <laughs> I will bring Slicey here tomorrow morning. It's, they put so much effort into this garden, it's quite wonderful. I tried to find out something about it and I can't. Just beyond that it seems to be called Queer Garden on Google Maps and I have no idea why. So I don't know, if anyone knows, I'd love to hear. But anyway, there we go. Um, okay. It is a lovely evening. Okay, so let me get a nice shot of the garden. All of it in its entirety. Huh. Oh, I love living in Amsterdam. I really do. Okay, so, uh, believe it or not, there is some red light here, red light stuff. And I'm gonna show you a window because there's nobody in, uh, standing there but this is what the red light district actually looks like windows like that and i'm not going to explain it in any more detail because it's not the right tour for that but i'm sure you know what i'm talking about and i'm just going to obviously just keep the the camera pointed this way on this lovely peaceful evening it is looking kind of hopeful for tomorrow being uh, really, really wind-free. Hello, dog. A beautiful bee. <laughs> I've got a friend. There's a lovely dog following me in the middle of the road. I'll just leave him alone. Okay. Uh, that garden is planted just by the people in the neighbourhood there. Uh, very nice. trying to see what Ronnie said. <laughs> I can't scroll back too much. I'll have to look at the chat later. Um, okay, so behind me is a red light district window and I wanted to show you uh, a gable stone above it. Here you go. 
and it says Maison la Tolerance, House of Tolerance. Now, I can't find out how long that's been there for. Hi. Um, so I don't know if it's like a really new thing or not, but because I can't point my screen at the window, I've also got a picture of you to show you of what's behind me with obviously no sex worker in shot. So there you can see the, uh, the gable stone. And whether it's just coincident that there happens to be a, a red light brothel below the gable stone of Maison La Tolerance, I don't know. So hopefully one day I'll know the answer. Let's try and get that off screen. Cool. So somebody just, you can talk to me, it's fine. Uh, listen, uh, we are from this uh, garden. Oh, you uh, are? Where, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where we find it? Uh, yeah. The, the flight stream. So I, I'll. Uh, can you come back to us? Or give me a yes, I finished just now, and then okay, I'll come back there. there. I'd love to know more about the garden. Yes, It'd be cool. Uh, we should say, say to you everything. Yes. Also, awesome. thank you. I will send to you. Uh, yeah. Coming big okay. Also, yeah. There's people watching, but you can. Do you want to say hi? Hey. hey I don't mean. Let me put it on the, the camera on this side. Uh, oh no! I didn't. So, one hey. of the gardeners. How there's a mic here that can hear. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, welcome to Amsterdam, yeah? Thank you. And <laughs> yeah. welcome to Singel. Yeah, okay, awesome. And, and yeah, I see you later, yeah? Yes, okay, hey, bye. Success. Bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Very cool. Um. <coughs> so, okay, now. Oh, how fortuitous was that? Very, very, very cool. I'll be able to tell you all much more about the garden very soon. Okay, so this building here is really lovely and has quite a story to it. So I'm gonna come up onto the bridge and talk about it. As you can see, it's a hotel called The Craftsman now. Okay, there we go. Oops. Yeah, I just <laughs> I have to get so far away from the building. I'm walking backwards, always a bad idea with the camera. Um, right, there the whole building is now in shot. <coughs> so, this is um, single number 83 to 85 there in the middle of the screen. And it was bought by this man in 1651, called Nicholas Swan. And he actually bought three houses and he converted them into one house. Now it has this very classical facade. Also, uh, let's see, it also has these Ionic capitals. Uh, there, also sticking out in the same way that Van Kampen made his stick out. I can't remember the Italian architect that he co copied. I think the name escapes me, but never mind. Now, um, in 1917, a Mr. Brower had bought the building and he made it into a hotel and it was actually, well, it's called the Hotel Brower after him. And um, uh, it was run by the National Christian Temperance Association. <laughs> which meant that it was basically a booze-free boarding house. Perish the thought. Anyway, um, from 1998 until recently, it was run by actually the grandson of Mr. Brower. And uh, I actually recommended friends stay there when it was still the Hotel Brower because it looked so quirky. I think Bill Clinton stayed there once, if I remember correctly. Um, and... Um, Oh man, it was a really bad recommendation because the place was falling apart and they hated it. And uh, it was... <laughs> but anyway, thankfully, it is not like that anymore uh, because it was bought by a lovely lady, Michelle, who uh, has completely rejuvenated it. And it was renovated, was made into 14 rooms. It's this beautiful, high quality, slightly quirky boutique hotel. And she let me walk through there this morning, or this afternoon actually. Uh, where is it? Here. 
and take a little video. And this one's quite a oh, quite a big file, so maybe it's taking a while to load. I did test this before. Oh, please work. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. It's... Now I'm not even sure if you can. Okay, let me try sharing that again. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so this is me walking into the reception. She was actually right there. I love it that the owner's at the reception. And it's all very clean and renovated now, but it's still got its wonderful, sort of quirky feel. And. Um, I had to sort of dodge guests. I didn't want to get any guests in shot, but you come through here, there's a tiny stairway upstairs. I guess you've got to like stairs, although I think there's actually an elevator as well. Beautiful old tiles. Look at these. How's that for a lovely original Delft blue tiles? And uh, kind of panning around. This is the little breakfast room. Looking out actually to exactly where we are and actually look that little uh, earth moving machine is still there oh you can't see because you can only uh, see what's on screen but uh, check it out <laughs> so I am really liking this little video sharing thing so what I will be doing uh, in our further travels whenever we go past a lovely hotel of which there are many in Amsterdam and nice five-star ones as well um, I will go beforehand and ask them if I can make a video uh, walking through. I'll probably go at 8 a.m. or something uh, when there are no guests around. So that's going to be fun. Okay, let's see. This house here, which the address is single. Oh no, I haven't shown you the gable stone on the side yet because it's bought by Mr. Swan, yeah? And I, it's so difficult to get to this gable stone. I can't get opposite it. Um, so there it is, and it's a swan. Uh, so I, I kind of took the best photo I could, and I think if I zoom in with my camera, it's gonna, I mean, I zoomed in with my camera, it's gonna be ever so slightly better than, oh, come on. Oh, yeah. So I'm now struggling. It's the first time this has happened, this too. Oh, there we go. Okay. There. So, very pretty looking swan. Okay. Goodness me. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I've got the picture stuck on the screen now and I don't know how to get it off. Um, let's, I will delete the picture. Let's see, delete, delete, delete. Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, that took a while, didn't it? Okay. <laughs> a skeptical swan. So this house here, uh, let me go way back because it goes up six floors. Oops, easy. They've done such a beautiful job uh, renovating what was the Hotel Brower. As you can see, what is it? The Craftsman. Crafts, craftsman. The Craftsman. So that's what you need to Google. Look up the Craftsman. Beautiful location. Okay, so this house that's in the middle now is six stories high. It's actually, this one here, is KLM House number 72. And that was built around 1730. And the gable up at the top is... Ta-da! is uh okay, so I still have some learning to do clearly oh God, come on. this is happening again now okay there's the gable up at the top <laughs> and um this is hermes H-E-R-M-E-S. Now, he is the Greek god um, of, tr well, amongst other things, trade and commerce. So, obviously, a very popular figure to have on the tops of things. So, he had uh, wings on his helmet. 
And um, so Hermes, the Greek version of the Roman god who I mentioned earlier. i get him off screen. Oh, there's the chat back. Good. Okay, so uh, that's what the merchant who bought this house had uh, decided to put on the top. A good Louis XIV gable. Uh, Louis XIV, the Baroque period. And you see, kind of a bit fussy. Oh, you miss Lee a lot. I miss Lee being on tours as well. So I'm going to get on some tours soon, certainly. Anyway, look, the second owner of this house is quite well known uh, in history. His name was, his nickname anyway, was Dicker Case, which means Fat Case. Case was a nickname. And he weighed 223 kilos or 500 pounds. He was a salmon merchant, so I guess he got a little bit too high on his own supply. And um, he died, and it became quite a spectacle because he had a double-sized coffin. It was three feet wide and three feet high, and apparently they needed double the amount of people to carry it. Uh, so they got tw I, I, one book said 12, and the other one said 24 people carrying it, so I don't know which is correct. But apparently one of the support brackets broke when they were carrying him out here. And it was too difficult to move and he had to stay out there in his coffin overnight until they could fix it. And this drew more and more and more interest, of course, from local people. And um, yeah, then he was, uh, oh my God, Hermes, the Greek god of scarves, that is hilarious. Uh, so then he was buried to great fanfare. Uh, he was actually buried at the Carthusian Monastery. Do you remember I showed you that? It has that lovely um, courtyard and the, 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 the racks outside that the widows who lived there would be able to do laundry to make a little bit of extra money. He was buried out there because if he'd been buried in um, the church where he was, he could have been buried, he would have had to have paid for a double grave plot because of his great size. Anyway, so yes, not very dignified, Carly, but um, I guess he's made it into the history books. Okay, so to end the tour today, I have another lovely old photo taken from around about here. Let me try and line this up. I think, well, if I go too much further, you won't see the, uh, the dome. So let's see if I can get this to share without any fuss. Here we go. <sighs> so, how, and you see the bridge uh, over yonder where the pumpkins are. It was actually a drawbridge then. So, uh, and uh, da da. I'm going to do that again just for fun. Da da. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. Um, so that's the end of what I prepared. I was frantically preparing this all day today, all afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, it's time for the quiz question. So um, those of you who have already won a slicey, please uh, don't answer uh, because uh, it will be nice if uh, everyone who wants one can have an opportunity. So the quiz question today is this. I just mentioned and I showed you uh, a bust of the Greek god Hermes, <laughs> not of scarves, of trade and commerce. And earlier in the tour, I mentioned the Roman god of commerce and trade. And what is the Roman god's name is the question today. No, Diane, Hermes is the Greek one. Mercury! Susan! I do, I'm not even sure. You don't have a... I, you know, I've lost track completely about who has uh, what names and whatnot. So, Susan... Um, send me an address and I will post off a slicey. Uh, even tomorrow, probably. Uh, thank you, Hilary. Um, 
so uh, yeah, no, it was Mercury, the god of trade and commerce. So popular here and on so many buildings because this is a city born on trade and commerce. I'm aware that there's a terrible lag and more on some devices than others, but I don't know any way of, uh, of doing this better. So, thank you for everybody for joining. Thank you for donations made or made last week or during the week. I really appreciate it. It's very kind of you. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go and find out all about that garden now. So. Uh, Bye-bye, everybody, and you take care and have a good week. And hey, maybe I'll see you tomorrow morning for the um, Good Morning Amsterdam tour at 8 a.m. my time. Otherwise, you can always catch it on YouTube. Bye.